Time to talk about the old shoe project. Welcome back class, Mr. G here today talking about ceramics, clay, and uh, and shoes for today's project. I was trolling through Instagram. Lakeside Pottery is also really good for this. Uh, they have these layouts for shoe projects. The reason that I was doing this was because we have a challenge uh, at my school. Good to promote New Year's resolutions. That's why I'm bringing it out now and give you guys time to prep this ahead of time because I think this is a great... Me, I'm always trying to lose weight. Why? Because one of my big things is I like... I do Fitbit challenges all the time um i'm in a heavy walker runner group and then i have like hardcore runner people at the school we're all competing step wise yesterday alone thirteen thousand steps i'm i'm a big fan of, of trying to get something that's engaging trying to engage more people and have us all do this co collectively let's make the shoe piece a trophy for the winner of the step challenge and this is something i've done with my uh the pe coach at my school we have a uh, collaboration where He's the one who's over the steps and calculating those. And we have a couple different prize categories. We have one for students. We have one for teachers, uh, first and second place uh, design. And I'm just starting to make a couple test pieces for these shoe projects. So I'm going to be doing more in the future that are going to be a lot higher quality because I'm looking at these. I'm like, I could do better than that. And um, so going forward, definitely keeping this up. I think this is a good project for us to do because I think that it's it's something that's fun. It, it brings the community together and it's it's, and nothing beats a challenge. I always love a challenge. So today's project, we're talking about how to make the shoe project for yourselves. So Lakeside Pottery has this kind of laid out on their website. So I'm, I used a lot of their methodologies in it, but I personally prefer a video because I think the video makes it a whole lot easier. So again, you guys can show this to your classes, so your students use this for direction for yourself, but it's a really handy tool to have. So diving into that process there, we're gonna start out by rolling out a few sheets of clay. Starting off with the basis of our shoe design, we're gonna need a few sheets of clay rolled out. Now, as these are firming up, you wanna to get to that leather hard, almost, almost leather hard category, um, leather hard quality of the slabs before we start cutting into them. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our shoe template. Now, for some people, you guys can trace your shoes themselves. I don't, I really don't wanna trace my shoe because this thing, it's a, it's bigger than my head so that's a large shoe so I didn't feel like tracing mine out so I just freeform now once you freeform it you're gonna have a couple things we're gonna have the bottom level of the shoe because I want mine small I mean, it's a trophy I don't want these things massive uh, bottom level of a shoe the tongue which is the inside of the shoe part of the interior section the front top piece of the shoe that goes over just like this the back of the shoe so we can put down where our sh foot fits inside the shoe so you're going to do that as a wavy kind of line pattern uh what you probably want to do is roll these roll it to the side and make sure that all that line is and finally you're going to need a couple extra strips of clay uh you want to use these strips to help as filler pieces putting pieces around cutting different shapes cutting out lines piping that you're going to have around the piece having those a uh, couple single strips that are already set up makes life a lot easier now once i've got all my pieces cut out i'm going to cut them out lay them on top of that slab roll uh cut out each individual piece and then i'm going to start working on the assemblage now for me i wanted to make sure that my assemblage was solid so as i'm putting the pieces down i've got my slip cup to the side i'm adding generous generous amounts of slip as i'm adding the pieces together to make sure that everything sticks properly i have no air pockets hid hidden in there and also it works as a good binder so i can thicken up sections at the same time you can always thin the piece out as you're building it but it's harder to make it thicker as you're building i i just don't i i think that adding clay pieces on is a good idea but adding on just chunks of clay and then trying to smooth everything out just going to end out work out real well now after i've got those pieces starting to add those pieces together again i'm start with the back of the shoe first i, I want to get the, the basics of where the foot fits inside the shoe first then add strip around the front side so i can then add on the top cover and the tongue i know there's probably a technical name for the top of the shoe and i'll put that in the in the notes so just be on the lookout if you see words pop up it's because i didn't know what i was talking about when i started talking about this stuff that happens a lot cutting these pieces out smoothing the pieces together again you're dealing with 
putting slabs together, joining slabs together, generous amounts of slip if you have extra clay that you can add to the seams to ensure that all those pieces are added together properly, that is the best solution for you to make slab pieces out with. Again, smoothing out all those pieces as you're working. I like using a sponge. Sometimes I'll just use the tools, but you wanna make sure that you're putting those pieces smooth on the get-go. Now, some people are probably gonna say this somewhere in the comments, then why didn't you smooth out your slabs? Because if I'm doing a shoe and I have a canvas print on the slab, I wanna use the canvas design on the shoe. I like Keds and Kicks and Chucks, so there's that canvas element. That's a me thing. I like that thing. It looks cool. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna take it away. I'm not gonna lose detail that I have to re recreate all over again. Once I've got those pieces joined together properly, now it's time to start adding those details, which is the shoelaces, the sides of uh, the bits of leather that are attached around the sides of the shoe, uh, stripes, piping, all that kind of stuff. All the details are added after. Make sure that as you're adding the details, again, keep adding the slip. Don't stop on the slip because we'll make sure that all those pieces are adhered properly and you can smooth things out and creates a nice finish afterwards. Making those shoelaces, I took a slab and I cut very thin slivers of clay strips out of there and I just overlaced them on top of each other, smoothing them down, docking them a little bit with the tool on the end so that could, they're pressed generously into the clay and then laying more clay on top of it just to hide those marks because you don't have to smooth out something that you don't see right uh, but you do want to make sure that it is properly joined together but it doesn't need to be pretty so as long as it's functional that's the key uh, once I've gotten those pieces done and smoothed out I've gone ahead and started working on smoothing out the tongue smoothing out the sides adding more piping add lines around it this is where your creative style comes into play if you have a sneakerhead or a student who's a sneakerhead or you're a sneakerhead and you want to add in those designs now is your time create those shoes that you've dreamed about make that make that vision a reality and uh, and make something cool and it's always always fun after all that is said and done yes i do recommend that you bisque fire these first but i did not why because i was under time crunch and i had to get these over to my coach because uh our step count ended a month ago and the kids needed their prizes so i want to go ahead and get those over to him so i went ahead and glazed my pieces up while they're still at that leather hard stage what you got to remember is if you're glazing before the bisque you are adding a wet medium to something that's supposed to be drying out so you're making it a lot longer to dry out and if this stuff's gotten bone dry and you're adding water to it that might be detrimental to your piece overall be cautious how much glaze or how much water liquid things that you're adding back into the clay so that you don't wreck the work that you've built it's all about understanding the water ratio how much water you can put in before it wrecks the clay i've done this over years where that's kind of my thing i understand how water and clay work really well together that was my course of study a lot in ceramics class so i got really comfortable with doing it so when students in my class are doing stuff like that i tell them yes that'll work no it's not going to work because i already know because i know factors of that's going into that i think i'm going to do a video on this coming up soon so stay tuned for that most of us don't understand how clay works in general so more tools that we have in the toolbox always better to have so once all that glaze was was done on there quick firing this is like one of those 48 hour firings i do a long preheat beforehand to ensure that that piece comes out just right but i want to get nice and um and give it plenty of time to get all the moisture out of the clay before it starts to go ramp up through the bisque process but it comes out so crispy so nice uh i do like using uh jungle glazes on on pieces that are going to be kind of show pieces where um you have those bits of frit elements that are just that chunky bits that are on there and they melt all over the place and it looks really cool i think that's fun uh we're talking about making a busted shoe for the next event and we are going to make a dead last position for our teachers for the teacher who gets the lowest amount of steps they're going to have a pair of shoes that are still in the box um so i look forward to making those videos for you guys coming up so fun project i was like I was like that community stuff. All right, let's go ahead and wrap up class like we always do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share all the various platforms. Get the message out there to, to as many teachers, friends, students, as much as we possibly can. Don't forget, if you guys had a question during today's class, raise your hand in the comments below. Happy to answer the questions from my classmates. Other than that, I will see you guys next class. Keep up those, uh, those resolutions, work out, do whatever you need to do to keep yourself healthy. And I'll see you guys in the next class. Later, guys.